Hi, welcome back. In the last video we created our Express project with Express Generator. I already changed the port number here, but I didn't talk much about this, well, the server file here basically. I will do this now and then also talk about the app.js file and the other folders because it's very important to understand so that you're able to well actually work with the structure and create cool applications with it. So in our server file, we're beginning by well having some imports here and that's basically our app file. We'll have a look at this in a second, which sets up our express application. We import the HTTP module, which we did in all the other lectures or videos before when we were you're working with pure Node.js. So this is Node's HTTP module. Then here we're creating a port variable and we're initializing it with this normalized port method here. Let's have a look at this method. We can find it here. Basically what this method does is it parses a string value into a number, into an integer. That is in a nutshell what it does because here we're passing it like this, uh, like a string, and then we're transferring it into a number. Why are we doing it this way? Because it also tries to get our port from our environment variables. So basically here, we're just setting the port and then with app set, we're setting it inside the express app, which again will handle all, well, everything for us, all the communication with nodes, so to say, um, will be handled by Express and therefore the setup, which port, the, the creation of the server and so on, everything is handled by Express and therefore we have to set the port in our Express app. Then here we're creating the server, well, basically straightforward with the normal HTTP module by node and we're passing our Express app as a handler for all the, well, tasks um, coming from this server, so to say. Then we're setting the server to listen to port and this is nothing else than what we had here in our server chess file in the last project. HTTP create server, then what should handle the requests in the case in our current video um, express in the last video we did it manually with this handle request function and then that we listen to this port. Well, we're doing the same here, split up over several files. We're creating the server, tell that Express will be responsible for handling all requests, and then we're calling the listen method on the server and set it to the port, which is just an integer we parsed out of this. Then we got to, well, our functions here, which listen to certain events, an error event and a listening event. The error event will call this on error method here and we'll just we'll take care about whatever error may appear during listening. For example, that a port is already in use. So this is our server file. Now let's have a look at our app file, which is our actual express application. In here, well, we got a bunch of imports at the top and uh, well, basically all kind of utilities we need to get our app work nicely. We're requiring two routes here. These are default routes that ship with this as an example, so to say, because routes are stored in a separate folder. We'll have a look at this in a second. And then well, first we're creating our app by running express as a function. This is our module we're importing here. This creates the express application. Then we're configuring it. First we configure or we set up our view engine because with express we use a templating engine to be able to dynamically output variables in our HTML files, for example. You might know something like this from, um, from other languages like PHP, for example, where we also got templating engines. Here we're setting up which engine we want to use, Jade in this case, and we will have a look at different templating engines in future videos. And where we store our views, so in this views folder, now by their name fuse, we're basically just saying, well, their name always refers to this root folder, so to this 05 express first app folder. And then we tell it's in the fuse folder there. This is basically what we're saying so that our fuse 
can be found in this fuse folder where we have our jade files here. Now, .jade is basically something which will be compiled into HTML in the end. But we'll, as I said, have a look at this templating stuff in the next videos. Then we continue and, well, we got a, got a bunch of middleware we're using here, so to say. A bunch of actions we're using on each request which we get, where we basically parse the body and possible cookies and, well, so on. We also declare where our public finds are to be found in this public folder. This is important because these files are, well, our style sheets, our JavaScript files, and with this, we're basically just setting up that these files should be accessed, accessible statically. So that this, these files should be loaded through, like example, an import link in our HTML code and so on. So this sets up our public folder where our assets will live. Then we're setting up two routes and we're always using this use method, which just says use the current request, apply some action on this request to so some middleware, something the request is routed through, so to say. So with this here, we're saying, well, this is the path we're accessing either the root folder or users. So in the URL, either just a slash at the end or slash users, and then which, well, route should be executed, so to say. Now that routes and users are variables we're setting up at the top here and which point to our JavaScript files. So all we're saying here is that if we access this route, if we're having this as a path in our URL, then we want to well, use this routes file here, this index file, this file here to handle this request. And if we have users, we want this users file to handle this request. So we're just filtering the path and then determining which file, which method should take care about this request. So I hope this is clear is how we're having a bunch of filters here doing all kinds of stuff with our poor request. And one of these very important actions is that we're filtering and saying, well, which of our files or our functions should actually handle this request and will render something back and so on. So in a way, this is comparable to our last video where we were saying that well, everything should be handled by handle request. And here we were also getting the path and then saying, okay, we want to render this or this HTML file. And here it's a similar thing. We're getting the path and then saying, who should take care about this? Next thing is, we're, well, as the description says, catching some 404 errors. So again, this is some middleware and this is how middleware is used in Express. So you already saw we got several arguments we can pass to these use functions. We can pass a path and then, well, a uh, function which should take care about it. Well, we can um, pass our functions and we can also pass anonymous functions which take a request, a response and a next object. But in the end, all these functions here resolve to a function that well takes this request response and next because this is how we well funnel through our middleware we're calling next at the end to say okay now the next step should be executed so that we're dropping through all these use cases and not stopping at one and we also say what do we want to do with the request or the response so here we're just handling 404 errors down here um, well we get some other error handlers, basically just making sure that if errors happen, they are handled in a certain way. Let's have a look at our routes. So when we're accessing slash, like, like here, we're on this index page or we're using this index route, this routes index file here. Let's have a look at this index.js file. As you see, it, well, it uses the express router, which is, well, just another helper object, so to say, which 
in the end just takes this middleware function here as I said with request response next and here again will just gets this dot slash route so kind of a duplication here but here again we're just saying for slash we want to get this uh, this route here and while we're doing this is something I will show you in a second then here we're rendering out this index HTML file and we're passing a JavaScript object into this file. And this just sets up some variables, so title variable, which we can use inside our template to output content dynamically there. Now templating is a topic I want to talk about in a separate video. But for now, just know here we're rendering the file and we're passing some information into that file, which we can then display there. Now our user's JS file is pretty similar. And well, here we also have this slash thing. Huh, strange, right? Because in this app.js file, we're using users as a path to use users. And then in here, we get slash and not users. Because the get um, method here describes our route. In the app.js file, we're just saying, Whenever we encounter this path, this file or this file should take care about it. Inside this file, we have the actual routing going on. And here we have a get route as we do in this index.js file. We might also have a post route here. And we will, of course, see this in later videos. Now, the path specified here is to be seen relative from the path we're using here. So we're kind of resetting this back to zero once we're inside this file. Therefore, users slash is still URL slash users. But here we get a route for the case that we're just accessing this slash users. Let me add another route here by just copying that. And then I call this, uh, let's say, user detail or just detail slash detail. And then I want to say detail here so that we see it actually changed. So now we would expect that if we navigate to, let's say, localhost 8000 users, that we see this route because we just got this slash here at the end. But if we navigate to users detail, we will see this, we will access this route. Let's try it out. So let me save this. Now let me rerun my server start and now I navigate to slash users respond with a resource is exactly the text we see here so now we're targeting this route now let me attach slash detail at the end now you can see we're seeing detail which is what we entered here so these are kind of sub routes starting at the path we're specifying here slash users and then we can here add sub routes to that now, if you handle it this way, or you just have, let's say, not this users folder, but just this slash path here leading to delete this to my routes file or to this index.js file to be precise. And then in here, I could also add these routes. So let's say like, like this and then get rid of users.js and then just have to make sure I add users here and here users detail if I now reload this it still works now I get all my routes in a single file because of my app.js file I'm just saying all routing starting at the root folder so to say at the root level of our URL should be handled by my routes variable which is just this index file here and in this file I'm setting up all my routes so this is another possibility, have it split up over multiple, multiple files, have it in one file. This is how our basic skeleton looks like and how it works. And in the next video, we'll play around with it a little bit more and add some more views and yeah, well, create, start creating our own application. See you there, bye.